In the early 2000s, architectural visualization was at a crossroad. On one side, you had powerful 3D modeling tools like Max and SketchUp, capable of creating detailed buildings and environments. On the other, we had Photoshop, which was flexible but flat, with no real understanding of space or depth. Then came the strange and brilliant piece of software that kind of worked like a bridge, and it was called Piranesi. It wasn't a render engine, and it wasn't a painting program either. It was something in between, an artistic post-production tool that could take a 3D scene and transform it into a handcrafted illustration. Nobody is talking about it these days. Before we continue, the Blender market is going through the spring sale with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, courses, 3D models, and more. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Piranesi was primarily a 2.5D painting software, not strictly 3D and not 2D. It allowed artists, especially architects and visualization professionals, to take rendered images or cat perspectives and paint over them with depth-aware brushes. The trick was that it worked on images exported with depth and material information, which enabled users to apply textures, lighting effects, and artistic styles, as if they were painting in 3D, even though the interface looked like a 2D painting tool. So while it wasn't a full 3D modeling package, like Blender or Maya, it wasn't pure 2D either. That's why it's often categorized as a 2.5D software, a hybrid, where you paint on a perspective image with some spatial intelligence. It was developed by Informatic Software and used mostly in architectural rendering workflows to add atmosphere, realism, or stylization to basic 3D exports. But if there is software such as Photoshop, why was Piranesi created in the first place? And this is a great question. The key difference lies in how Piranesi handled depth and perspective compared to Photoshop. Photoshop is a powerful 2D image editing tool, but it doesn't natively understand depth, in addition to perspective or geometry, in a way that a 3D rendered scene requires. If you paint on a render in Photoshop, you are essentially painting flatly over a static image. You would have to manually fake lighting, shadows, or texture wrapping across 3D shapes, which takes a lot of skill and time. Let me explain further. Piranesi lets you paint directly onto 3D renderings, with depth, materials, and surface information preserved. This means you could, for example, apply textures that automatically follow the perspective, I mean perspective of walls or floors. And this is something that was not possible for any 2D painting or texturing software, especially back in the day, I mean in the 2000s and 2010s. Piranesi also had the ability to use depth brushes that fade objects in the background or darken the recesses, simulating light and effects easily. To make things even better, it has the ability to add fog, weathering, or materials, like stone or brick, in a way that is wrapped across complex geometry, and you could do that with no manual skewing like in Photoshop. One of the interesting features of this software is the ability to generate cold, sterile 3D renders, even a hand-drawn or painterly look. This is useful because many architects and designers wanted to avoid the overly realistic style of the early CG. So Piranesi helped them stylize quickly without going back to 3D modeling or rendering programs. Piranesi worked in tandem with 3D modeling software like SketchUp, Max, Archicad, and so on by using a specialized export workflow which set it apart from traditional image editors like Photoshop. So instead of exporting a flat image, the 3D software could generate a file format known as Epix, which was especially designed to use in Piranesi. This format didn't just include a basic rendered view. It contained rich scene data for pixel depth information, material IDs, object IDs, and camera perspective. Essentially, it was a big 2.5D representation of the scene which allowed Piranesi to understand not just where things were in the image, but how far away they were, what materials they were made of, and what objects they belonged to. This depth-aware and geometry-aware environment gave Piranesi an immersed amount of control compared to Photoshop, which simply it didn't offer. For instance, 
in Piranesi, you could paint textures that conform to the geometry of a wall or selectively adjust lighting on an object without affecting the background. And this is all thanks to the underlying spatial data. You can also drop in entourages like trees, people, or cars, and they could automatically scale and orient themselves correctly in the 3D space based on the depth map. This created a hybrid experience where artists could freely paint and decorate scenes as if they were working in 2D, while the software ensured all the edits were grounded in the structure of the 3D environment. And by contrast, as I said, Photoshop treated everything as a flat raster image. So if an artist wanted to simulate depth or perspective, they had to do that manually, using layer masks, perspective grids, and time-consuming tricks. There was no native understanding of the scene's geometry, which made tasks like applying stylized textures, lighting variations, or atmospheric effects far more labor-intensive and error-prone. This is why despite being a rich tool, Piranesi became a favorite among architects and designers who needed to produce expressive, concept-level visuals quickly without sacrificing spatial accuracy. As of 2025, Piranesi remains an active and supported software developed by the same company as we said before, Informatics Software. The latest version Piranesi 6.0.3 is available for download and purchase on their official website. But for some unknown reason to me, it is not as active as it was, and people aren't interested in it as they once were. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like videos like these that go into the history of 3D software, just let me know in the comments section below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.